Hey, what's going on? Luke here. I'm going to be going over my Game 2 side for the 2023 State of Origin Series for the New South Wales Blues. Now, this is only a couple days after Game 1. Obviously, the Blues, super disappointing. I did a video on it. If you haven't seen it already, go ahead and check out my video where I talked about the reasons why I thought New South Wales lost the game. Kind of went in depth um, on some of the selections and, you know, just how they actually played in general. So, go and check that one out. Uh, but we're obviously going to be going over my 1-17. to Now, I've tried to come up with a little bit of a combination of who I'd go with as well as was actually realistic. Like some of the selections, for example, I'll be honest, I probably wouldn't pick Isaiah Yo. Um, you know, very questionable, very debatable. Obviously, you know, Penrith captain um, in the leadership group for New South Wales, been around for a couple of years, won premiership after premiership. Everything says that he's going to get selected. Brad Fittler obviously loves the whole Penrith combination. Me personally, I would have went with Cameron Murray, but I just know for a fact that Isaiah Yo is going to be there. So there's no point in me, you know, doing this team and being like, oh, well, I'm going to chuck in, you know, Matt Burton in at 5'8". He's one of my favorite players. Like, it's clearly not going to happen. Happen. So uh, I'm just going to go, like I said, a combination of, you know, realistic selections and also a few of my own little ones just chucked in there, but ones that actually make sense in terms of getting picked. So we're going to start off with the fullback, which is it's crazy to think that this probably isn't a position that has been like highly controversial of, I don't know, when was the last time you had a debate like Maddie Moylan and Tedesco uh, all these years back and obviously we saw how things panned out. At the moment, James Tedesco, super down on form. A lot of talk about him uh, being dropped. I know he made some bad sort of mistakes in defense, and he tried his guts out in the sense that he took a lot of runs, but he just didn't offer a lot. Uh, definitely playing very selfish at the moment. At the same time, though, the alternatives are obviously, you know, you have Troll Mint, you got Tom Draboyevich. I'm saving them for other positions in the squad. And also you have you have Dylan Edwards and, you know, you Will Kennedys and such. But I think Dylan Edwards is the one that's getting talked about at the moment as being like the real the real competition for James Tedesco. And for me, I just I don't think it's I don't think it's the right move. Uh, we've seen with the Penrith guys that the step up to state of origin level, it's just it is it's a lot. It's a lot, and James Tedesco's been able to handle it for years. And you know, he played pretty pretty terrible in game one, but I'm willing to give Teddy a, a go in, in game two, and hopefully he steps up. Hopefully we see some James Tedesco of old, because quite frankly, uh, you know, there's lots of moments we can go, oh, the, the old James Tedesco would have done that. So hopefully the old James Tedesco reappears, but this is kind of like, this is this is do or die for James Tedesco, which is crazy going into this series. Never would have thought that, but, um, you know, James Tedesco needs to prove himself in a game two. Therefore, I'm willing to give a chance, and I think he will step up. I'm just one of those players that when, you know, when he's under adversity, I think he'll step up. Now, I kind of already mentioned it, and I may as well just do it. The back line that I've gone with is the exact back line that they had actually picked. Obviously, Latrell Mitchell was out due to injury, but I've gone with um, Brian Toto. Uh, you've got the Fox in there on the wings, and then the Sanders Turbo and Trell Mitt. So they, to me, they sort of pick themselves. If Tom Trebojevic can't play, or, or Latrell Mitchell, if any of them can't play, uh, I know Critter or Stephen Crichton came in, um, but that was because Ken Graham was out injured. And I think Campbell Graham should go in. I mean, realistically, I'd probably go with Matty Burton in the centers, but um, I actually got a spot for him. But I think next in line is Campbell Graham. You've got to chuck him in there. He's been in too good a form and uh, look, was very unlucky to not even get picked initially. So he's definitely next in line, whether it's wingers or centers. I don't care. You chuck him in. On to the halves. This is this is where things are going to get a little juicy because uh, look, Jerome Moore and Nathan Cleary uh, I was pretty vocal in the fact that I don't like them as a combo for, for State of Origin. They've been tried and tested and, you know, it just hasn't really, hasn't really gelled, hasn't really worked. Um, you can't really pinpoint any games where them as a halves combo really just, just you know, took out Queensland or, or played half decent. A lot of the times we sit here and we say, oh, they, New South Wales won despite Nathan Cleary or despite Jerome Lamar. Now, I'm going to just say that Nathan Cleary is in the side. He's my number seven. Um, I think... Just, just try and be someone else. I know he's sort of, he's had a few partners in the past, you know, with your, with your Cody Walkers and such. But I think let's give him a go with Nico Hines. For me, Nico Hines, uh, he was on the bench in game one, and that just, it just didn't make sense to me then. Then the game happened, and it still doesn't make sense to me now for him to be on the bench. Either he starts in the number six or the number seven, but you know, obviously the number six. Either he's there or he's not in the side. Because you know, just utility wise, I know he's at the Storm and he was utility, but he was only. Like he was only effective when he came on and he, he started at fullback or in the halves. This wasn't a case of Ryan Papanazan where you could just chuck him on anywhere. Like in the grand final, he didn't even play. Like he, he didn't even get a minute. So and that's what was gonna happen um in State of Origin too. So for me it's just like if there's injuries that happen, he can't come on and play as a forward. So that doesn't make sense. I'm going to play him at, at dummy half, which a position he's never played. Doesn't make sense. And then for the back line, 
the only position he can cover is pretty much fullback apart from the half. So it's just like it's such a waste. So I reckon Nico Hines, number six. Jerome Lawyer, it's kind of ironic that he probably played one of his better games um, in terms of try assists. And, you know, they actually looked all right down the left-hand edge um, with Jerome Lawyer. I thought he was I thought he was okay. Um, but at the same time, like, someone's got to be out for Nico Hines. And I'm not going to drop Cleary. I'm going to go with Cleary and Nico Hines as the halves combo. And then at the hooker, I'm going to keep Appy. Like, I... Probably initially would have said Damian Cook, but Coruscant didn't really do anything wrong in game one. Um, like, he wasn't outstanding by any means, but he was, he was pretty solid. So, I, I can't really see him getting dropped. So, I'm just going to chuck him in there at the number nine. The four pack is a little bit different, though. So, Jake Trebojevic, I think, should be okay. Uh, was sort of touch and go in terms of actually playing game one. So, he definitely should be back uh, for game two. So, I think he comes straight into the starting run on side in the proposition. Payne Haas, I think, retains his spot, which means Davida Pangoa Jr., Drops out of the side, and in my opinion, drops out of the side entirely. I think he was pretty much there just to add something different because it's very hard to replace Jake Jaboyevich in what he does. So, so I think that was the thought process in picking Pango Jr. Rather than try and replace Jake Jaboyevich, just go for something completely different. But Jake Turbo is back. He comes in. Like I said, Appy's there. Payne Haas is there. And Payne Haas has to play more minutes than bloody 30 minutes, whatever he played. He needs to be there. He is literally the best prop in the game. Why you wouldn't play him longer, I, I, just, I just can't work out. And it's not like we had all these props on the bench either. Just crazy to me. Then the back row, I've made one change. So I think Frizzell, I think he, he I would have had him in there probably initially. Like I thought he was unlucky to lose his spot a couple of years ago. Obviously there was injury. Then I thought he would just walk straight back in, but they went for like Tarek Sims and such. Um, and I think it's a deserved recall for Tyson Frizzell. And he showed exactly why he could have been, probably should have been in the side the last couple of years. Come straight back in, I thought he was quite effective. Probably should have had a try. Um, and then I've gone with Isaiah Yo, obviously retaining his spot. I touched on that earlier. I'm not going to go into that anymore. But the other back row I've gone with is Cam Murray to start. Um, you could go with Liam Martin as well, but Liam Martin, Cam Murray, either one of them I think has to start. Um, Liam Martin was so good, and so was Cam Murray. I think Liam Martin was obviously better, but um, yeah, either one of them to, to start. I think they've got to go with that. Um, they, they can't risk having like Hudson Young and you know all these guys who haven't really played for quite a while. So for me, Hudson Young, uh, I've chucked him on the bench. So I think he deserves a spot, but just a starting spot a little bit too soon at the moment. So that's my back row, Frizzell, Murray, and Yo, which then takes us to the bench, and I've already touched on it a little bit as well. So I'm just going to go over the actual 14 to 17. So I've gone with Matty Burton as the utility. You have Junior Palo, who I thought was pretty decent when he came on. You've got Liam Martin, who was outstanding. And Hudson Young, I'm going to give him another chance. I think he's someone you can stick with. I think he's someone who's going to be there long term. So I'd hate to just have him play one game, not play... I mean, he wasn't terrible. He wasn't dreadful. Um, maybe his aggression coming off the bench can be similar to, similar to maybe Liam Martin, um, you can have both of them come off um, firing off the bench. So um, and that's kind of my thought process on that one. I mean, obviously, like uh, Pengai drops out of the side, and there's um, a few guys, uh, you know, the whole Hines moving into the starting side. Matty Burton comes in. Matt Burton to me is the perfect utility uh, if, if that's what you want to go for. If you want to go for utility, I think you go for him. Uh, obviously, hook position is a little bit a little bit hard and they did talk about Cameron Murray um, possibly playing a little bit of dummy half if needed. So I suppose like if needed, if there's injuries, you can have you can have a forward go and fill in at dummy half or you could even add a stretch, you know, Nathan Peer could go there. And, you know, you chuck Burton in the half or something. But Burton covers pretty much all the back line. Not that he can play wing, but there's other players who can play those positions. He can come into the centers. He can obviously cover the halves. It just makes way more sense to me. And obviously, he's got the big boot too. So, you know, if all else goes to shit, you can chuck him on at lock or something. And, you know, you can just launch up a couple spirals. See, Nathan Cleary can do it too, but Burton just got that height on it. So... For me, I think that's a pretty formidable side. I think it's a lot better side than what they actually had in game one. And I know a few of the changes that I have made are purely down to the fact that they are now fit. So Latrell Mitchell comes in because he's fit. JJ Jaboyevic comes in because he's fit. I think they would have been in the side regardless. So it's not like I made some crazy changes. The only real one is probably Nico Hines. Um, but even then, I think that one kind of picks itself in a way. It's kind of unlucky for Drone the Wine that he did play pretty decent um, in the previous game and for me would still get dropped but just it is what it is I'm sick of these combinations anyways I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here that is my lineup for game two let me know in the comment section below what are your thoughts on this side do you think it's better than game one do you think it's similar to the side that they would actually pick in real life because like I said that's kind of what I was going for is try and sort of picture what um, Freddie would actually pick it's kind of hard to imagine what he'd pick because he's a little bit cooked to be honest but um Look, just let me know in the comment section below what are your thoughts of this side and, and who would you pick for game two? Obviously, there's going to be injuries too uh, and suspensions and all that sort of stuff um, probably in, in the lead up to game two. So, you know, there's probably going to be changes 
definitely was changes from my game one side to the actual side that ran out um, due to injuries. So uh, just keep that in mind. But um, yeah, I'm going to wrap things up here. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure you go ahead and smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. We're on the road to 15,000 subscribers. I think we're going to hit it pretty soon. So go ahead and subscribe if you haven't. Also go ahead and leave a like and a comment as well. Basically, the more interaction, the better. So if you can go ahead and leave a like, it just it really helps grow the channel and gets more views and all that sort of stuff. So if you can do me a solid, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe. Um, also give me a follow on social media, seeing it on the screen right now. It's Mr. Luke on YT. Been posting on TikTok quite a bit. We've been sort of growing on there pretty quickly. So go ahead, give me a follow. Uh, Instagram is another one. Mr. Luke on YT it is the same as what you're seeing on the screen. Give me a follow, give me an ad. And also a special shout out to all of the members. You guys have been absolutely amazing. Like I've said in previous videos, there's a lot of familiar faces, a lot of guys who have stuck around for quite some time now. So um, just thank you so much to everybody who has stuck around and has contributed in terms of being a member, as well as the Super Chatters as well. Well, you guys are equally as important. Um, techno been going off as of late, uh, but yeah, it's a lot of a lot of familiar guys. You more to your aliases and all that sort of stuff. Um, Galaxy, just uh, shout out to you guys. Thank you so much. But um, I'm gonna wrap things up here. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for more content on the channel. Obviously, you go know, NRL's back. We've got State of Origin. Um, plenty of videos to be made, and they will. And uh, look, I'll see you in the next one. There is.